In this video, I'll show you how to find critical values using Excel. So in the final exam study guide videos, I showed you how to find our critical values using Appendix F in the commonly used confidence levels table. You are also welcome to use Excel if you prefer. So for instance, in chapter eight with confidence interval estimates, when we are looking for Z values, and that's when we know the population standard deviation or when we're working with population proportions, I recommend using the commonly used confidence level table, which has our Z critical values provided. Remember that our confidence level is the complement of our alpha, which is the level of significance. So for example, a 95% confidence level means that we have a 5% alpha or a 0.05 significance level. So for instance, in problem number one, since we know the population standard deviation, I'm going to be looking for a Z value. And so I can just use my commonly used table here at 90% and my Z value is 1.645. Now for problem number two, when we don't know the population standard deviation, we can use the appendix F or we can use our formula. Specifically, the formula you want to use when we are doing a confidence interval estimate is our two-tailed test. Because with a confidence interval estimate, we have two tails on either side here. So in problem number two with our Verizon example, I would type in equals t.inv.2t parentheses. And for my alpha, since our confidence level is 95%, my alpha is 0 0.05, comma. And then my degrees of freedom is my n minus one, my sample of 20 minus one, which is 19. So I'll go ahead and type in 19 into my formula. Then when I hit enter, I get the same critical T value as I did from my appendix F. For chapter nine, if you prefer to use Excel, you can use this spreadsheet again as well. So for instance, here in problem number six, we know the population standard deviation of our Pepsi filling machines. So I'm going to be looking for a critical value of Z. Because again, it says here when our population standard deviation is known. It's important to identify what kind of hypothesis test this is. So in problem number six, we noted that this is a two-tailed test because it has equals and not equals in the null and alternative hypotheses. So here I would use this formula for my two-tailed test when I know my population standard deviation, and I will type in equals norm.s.inv parentheses. My alpha or my significance level in the story was 0 0.05. And then I divide that by two because I've got a two-tailed test. So when I close my parentheses and hit enter, I get my critical Z value for my two-tailed test. Note though that Excel doesn't know how to do plus or minus. So it just gives us the first critical value closest to the left. That's the negative 1.96. Make, I make a note here that it should be plus or minus our critical value. So as you can see here, when we looked at the appendix F, it was plus or minus 1.96. Because so my critical values, I have a negative 1.96 on the left, and I have a positive 1.96 on the right. If we look at problem number seven uh, with our Geico example, when we don't know the population standard deviation, that means we're looking for a T value. And again, I, I guide you and say, hey, let's look for the T value. Same thing on the exam. It's going to ask you for the critical T value. So you'll know if you're using Excel to find the critical T value when the population standard deviation is unknown, we're going to use one of these formulas. Again, you need to know, is this an upper tail test or a lower tail test? So when we look at this scenario, because it said that our claims exceed 1700, that's this greater than symbol in the alternative, I'm going to be doing an upper tail test. So this time we will be using this formula right here for upper tail for a critical T value. So I would type in equals T dot INV parentheses one minus, and in this story, the alpha is 0 0.05. I'll type in 0 0.05 comma. And then my degrees of freedom in this story was uh, our sample of 20 claims minus one. So there's our 19, close my parentheses, and when I hit enter, I get 1.7291, which was the same as we found in our appendix F. Now, if we look at problem number eight with proportions, and again, I give you the clue, we're working with Z values, because with proportions, 
we will use, and I make a note here, for hypothesis testing of proportions, we get to use these formulas. Uh, in this scenario, we also have a one tail, and we can see because the alternative says greater than, uh, we are going to be working with an upper right tail test. So I'm going to use this formula right here, and I can type in equals norm dot s dot inv parentheses one minus and then this problem our alpha or our level of significance was 0 0.1 so i'll type in 0 0.1 close my parentheses and hit enter and so my z value is 1.2816 just like we found in appendix f in the other video and that's how you can use excel to find our critical values of t and z for hypothesis tests as well as our confidence interval estimates. If you have any questions, just let me know.